Hello and welcome to a new edition of our Capital Call podcast series where we speak with investors in the startup ecosystem to understand the challenge that entrepreneurs are facing today in the aftermath of COVID-19 pandemic. Even as the lockdown gets eased world over, the recession is upon the world and startups are trying to find new ways to do business and create new value propositions for the new world. Today we have Ganapati Varnagopal, one of the co-founders and CEO of Axlaw which is an accelerator as well as a seed fund with a corpus of rupees 200 crores. Varun Kopal has been speaking with Axelor's portfolio as well as venture capital community over the past few months to understand the challenges that the economy is facing today. Hello Ganapati, welcome to Tech Circle Podcast. Angel funding will drop much uh, faster than the later stages. You see uh, uh, still some uh, deals that are confidence boosting for you uh, as a uh, venture capital investor, so w- w- what I, I mean, w- what exactly is the sentiment that you see on the early stage? Uh, things may not be as bad as it is for some of the late stage uh, companies, uh, right? So I would certainly expect when I talk to uh, you know, I spoke to a couple of angel platforms. They are saying that they are quite active because for many of their angels, their other asset classes are not something that they would consider investing at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, yesterday, we saw at least uh, two uh, announcements of uh, deals led by angel platforms. When I talk to uh, uh, my VC friends, uh, I think they are on the Series A side uh, or on the pre-Series A. Uh, they still are actively looking at opportunities to deploy. Wherever they've identified that the companies or the business models um, are benefited uh, by this crisis and, and the new opportunities come up. Um, so in general, I I, I would uh, expect uh, I I tend to have a more positive view. It's obviously a selfish view also uh, okay. that uh, early stage is likely to um, you know weather the storm better uh, compared mm-hmm. to some of the late stage. At this point in time, we have just had about uh, four weeks of response time to something like this, uh, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so most of the data that we are seeing is coming out of conversations or anecdotal evidence of uh, deals happening here and there. Mm-hmm. We still have to watch for another 30, 45 days uh, to look at uh, how uh, this whole thing will play out. Uh, but but you know we are living uh, day to day, so any okay. good news is uh, you know good enough for you to hold on to. Did you have any special initiatives in terms of? I mean, let's slow down a bit. I mean, is there any specific mandate for you from you know other partners and other you know uh, uh, founders? Uh, that's something that you should watch out for, look out for. Anything that at a fund level that you have looked at. We have been a little uh, fortunate that we spent the last 9 to 12 months uh, helping many of our companies raise their next rounds. So mm-hmm. on the runway perspective, I think we are quite happy with the way the situation is. But uh, we do have a large portfolio of industry companies compared to most other seed funds. Right? Okay. So, uh, so it is important for us to focus on these portfolio companies and make sure both on the business side and on the funding side, uh, we do uh, offer whatever help uh, our portfolio companies will need uh, uh, to to tide this crisis. Um, so we continue to do that. Uh, from a fund life cycle, we are just in our second year of active deployment. So there is still about uh, 60% of the fund uh, that is to be deployed. Um, we are going ahead with our upcoming accelerator cohort. So there is uh, no going back on that. Um, and uh, once we get time uh, um, after we have, we have kind of uh, helped our current portfolio companies uh, tide this crisis and come out stronger, we will uh, parallelly start looking at active investment opportunities. We have completed all the interviews, so we are very close to uh, uh, you know rolling out the offer. So there is no slowing down on that. Uh, on the on the seed fund side, uh, I think uh, we would pause uh, for about one one and a half months because mm-hmm. we need to spend more time with our uh, current portfolio companies, and then we will pick pick it up uh, once uh, we have the confidence that the current portfolio companies can come out of this crisis stronger. You as a fund is not uh, constrained by uh, necessarily by you know being answerable to LPs because you yourself are the LPs to some extent. 
So, right. uh, uh, I mean, does that give you more bandwidth in terms of you know not decelerating at a time you know probably because this is the best time for you to scout for you know better startups because there are a lot of other funds who are answerable. The LPs might be a little bit more hesitant while committing money to interesting startups, even if they are interested. Even in the past, uh, you know, in 2017, when uh, the early stage funding had taken a deep dive, we had actually taken a bold call to uh, uh, double the accelerator intake. Uh, we also stepped up, uh, stepped up our uh, seed investments. So any crisis is an opportunity if you see it that way. And uh, we are certainly fortunate uh, to have uh, proprietary capital. Uh, which means that uh, we are not really bound by any of the other external considerations. Uh, so, so we will uh, we will take good advantage. Of it. The pause is because the existing portfolio companies uh, need a lot of time. The founders are out there. Many of their uh, businesses have fallen to about uh, twenty to fifty percent of their uh, pre-COVID levels, right? Okay. Um, and uh, we have to help them navigate through this, uh, help them through the decisions that they need to make in terms of uh, cost restructuring. Uh, in many cases, helping them strike new partnerships, right? Uh, the existing value propositions of their current products uh, may not be relevant anymore. So helping them think through or reimagine possibilities with their existing customers, right? Uh, figuring out potential partnership opportunities among our portfolio companies, right? So all of this uh, takes a lot of time. I mean, we do... Uh, uh, one uh, maybe meet up either at a sectoral level or at a business model level with our portfolio founders, right? Uh, even on the community side, most founders find this um, uh, extremely uh, difficult to handle. So just uh, just making sure that they are among other founders who are also going through uh, this crisis, right? So all of this uh, takes time and uh, it's it's only right for us to make sure that uh, our existing portfolio founders get our maximum time at this point in time. Okay, I mean, are B2B startups uh, affected that much? B2B startups uh, have certainly been affected. There's no... I mean, I mean it's I mean, been start, only four fall, weeks, right? For, for uh, SaaS startups to see, you know, that kind of an impact all too sudden when you have, you know, annual revenue streams... Yeah, yeah, but but in a, any business, right? It is not just important that you sell. Uh, it is also important that you collect what you have sold, okay. mm -hmm. right? Uh, so we have seen uh, collection pressures in some of our uh, startups, uh, even even uh, SaaS ones, uh, right? Uh, where uh, the customers are on the other side are uh, uh, medium to large enterprises, uh, right? So we we will see this uh, pressure right through because everybody is uh, stuck for liquidity. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, just because you are a SaaS startup and you can bill your customer monthly doesn't mean that you will get that money in the bank, right? And okay. it is turtles yeah. all the way down, right? Uh, you have a set of people to pay to. Uh, you have a set of people uh, from whom you need to collect, and everybody belongs to the same ecosystem, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the pressures are likely to show up. I would certainly think that B2B start, uh, startups are uh, uh, better equipped. But more importantly, it's not so much about B2B or B2C as it is about uh, those with have uh, revenue streams and uh, those that have uh, cost structures uh, that are a little variable or flexible for them to manage this. I mean, most of the companies, whether it is our portfolio or otherwise, have uh, modeled out day zero scenarios as to how long the cash in the bank will last and it's a different sensitive levels so of uh, if your revenue falls by 100%, if it comes down to zero, if your revenue falls by 20%, revenue falls by 50%, right? And, and we, also, we all have to monitor this carefully to see at what stage will we be able to bounce back, right? Okay. Some of our companies which have been positively impacted are seeing, uh, um, you know, February levels uh, in their business. Mm -hmm. But for many of the others, um, you know, new business is not that easy to sign up. Right? Uh, cancellations of already signed up customers are beginning to happen. Collections have become uh, uh, delayed. Right. So, so, you know, if you look at uh, business as a system right, and what comes in and what goes out, starting from okay. yeah. prospecting to, uh, you know, having money in the bank and paying off your vendors, right? You know, every single aspect of the chain has been impacted. How is that breakup among your portfolio companies? Like what percentage 
of your startups have been affected badly and you know what percentage of your overall portfolio if you say how many are actually doing better than what they did 25% of our companies uh, are in the zone where uh, they have been positively impacted mm-hmm. right uh, now this positive impact can be a function of uh, you know whatever you are doing uh, becomes more valuable so if you are a if you are a company uh, that is in the telemedicine or the telehealth space right mm-hmm. the demand for a product like this has gone up dramatically or there is another company of ours in the fmcg distribution space right mm-hmm. so in in this current environment of scarcity just making sure that goods are there available in every uh, retail store for them to be able to service the spike in customer demand is something that has become uh, quite valuable there are also another set of companies uh, which are which are seeing newer opportunities things that they have not done before uh, but the current context is uh, creating uh, opportunities so we have a company in the b2b payment space right um, which was in the mostly uh, you know automation of payables and receivables and creating a network uh, for smbs uh, and the payment payments to flow through now they are seeing a lot of demand from financial institutions who are not just uh, offering liquidity or lending money but they care about end use monetary so okay. their product is now actually becoming the back end that makes it easy for the lenders to monitor the end use but in the process they are able to acquire customers uh, through the financial uh, institutions at a very low cost Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so there are new opportunities coming up, and the only thing the founders will have to be cognizant of uh, is to not just apply the regular uh, product view, saying this is what I was meant to build, or this is what whatever I had built in terms of product was meant to do, but to really take the market view. You know, talk to customers and find out what is it that they are really struggling with. Right. Even on the industrial side, uh, or for that matter, any any company that is. Uh, operating with customers which are dependent on a lot of uh, uh, manpower right on the industrial side uh, you know something like automation right or digitizing industrial assets right? you know even for smbs that is true right so digitization as a as a um, as a theme is going to become very very valuable there is 75% uh, you know i w- i would think another 50% of the people uh, will have to uh, uh, reengineer their current products uh look at new opportunities founders the the remaining 50% will be uh, folks so who will have to look at whatever they are doing question is not so much about whether your current product uh, is relevant anymore so do you see any covid related casualty among your portfolio company you know in the last eight weeks i think most of the focus has been in making sure that uh, there is enough runway Mm-hmm. i think that is the that is the most uh, important thing the second thing is working with companies and helping them navigate and reimagine right their product and value propositions i think the answer to this question will be a lot clearer uh, maybe in another uh, quarter or so okay. because a lot of experiments uh-huh. that are currently running uh, uh-huh. right uh, remains to be uh, seen whether they will be adopted by the market um so so currently the entire focus on making sure that you explore as many opportunities as possible run experiments to become more relevant to your existing customers uh use this as an opportunity to sign up customers i mean in the past if you look at a, every single uh, recession the one uh, uh you know clear thing clear strategy that has always worked this uh, never waste the recession and try to sign up as much customers as possible right mm-hmm. and then the context in which you signed up may change in a post covid mm-hmm. uh, scenario but the customers will still remain right and okay. they will have yeah. other things to demand keep the focus on customers whether it is consumers or enterprises just to bring in some empathy into understanding what are their problems in the new context and not be too wedded to your current product and your current value proposition and your current uh, sales uh, uh, process right and uh, constantly challenge yourself see fundamentally um, you know a lot of people talk about how this is going to impact entrepreneurs more right entrepreneurs by definition are people who look for uh, opportunities where most other people find problems yes this crisis have had uh, casualties but the ones who have emerged have emerged stronger 
Right. And the crisis itself has created new opportunities. Problem with uh, startups, the way we understand, you know, the modern day tech startups is that, you know, unlike the IT services companies, which weathered these storms perfectly, the problem is these guys are running on losses. So their and cash flow problem is uh, going to be much worse. I think at least in our portfolio, I was pleasantly surprised that even before we started calling up founders, uh, maybe mm-hmm. around the first week of lockdown to check what is it that they are doing, most of them had uh, had a plan. Okay. Right? Yeah. I have talked to a lot of VC friends and they all uh, admit that they've also been, uh, uh, you know, surprised that, that most founders had a plan, mm-hmm. right? Here are the things that uh, I want to do. Here is what I'm bringing down in terms of discretionary expenses. Uh, here, you know, here are the major uh, cost items, and this is how I'm I'm bringing it down. And most of them have taken a humane, equitable approach, saying that we will make sure that the pain is shared by everyone, and uh, the pain is uh, shared more at the top uh, than at the bottom. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so founders in general. You know, I have been part of large companies in the last five years. I've worked with a lot of uh, small companies, uh, startups, uh, with founders with different background, right? Uh, I mean, they, they, I mean, their business continuity plan when it comes to uh, managing uh, the, their customers' operations uh, run 24 by 7, right? Uh, is quite comprehensive, right? Uh, you know, even in these times, uh, I don't know, in how many cases have we had a situation or something getting reported where a customer's operation suffered because the startup was not able to deliver the kind of service. Very few. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And they have been able to re-engineer their uh, workforce, uh, re-engineer the way their engineering and product and ops teams work. Right. All with a single-minded focus of uh, customer ops not getting impacted. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. It would be unimaginable for us if we were having this conversation two months back and somebody had told us that, uh, you know, two months later, this is the kind, kind of conversation. It would have been unimaginable, right? But the system has responded. Uh, but I think the founders are doing their bit in terms of uh, making sure that uh, with, the, with the funding that they have, uh, the, you know, uh, to make it uh, last as long as possible. And along the way, make sure that the morale of people doesn't go down. And uh, yeah. continuously uh, look at uh, customers and asking how can we be more relevant for you. Among your portfolio companies, uh, how many startups were up for a new round? I mean, how many are you planning to do a follow-on or a bridge round in the next 6 to 12 months? You know, we just uh, did a count. Uh, mm-hmm. I think in the next uh, nine months, uh, we will have at least uh, eight to ten of our companies hitting the Series A or Series B. Uh, okay. Last year, we must have done about uh, five uh, Series A's. Um, so, so the pipeline is quite strong. Yeah, we will uh, we will certainly explore those opportunities. Uh, the only condition being that uh, I think the bridge has to come uh, with a plan to support. It. As of now, I think uh, we are doing okay. Um, but as and when opportunities come up, we will certainly come. So yeah, we have another two hundred, two hundred, three years. From a fund perspective, I mean, are you comfortable with the kind of cash reserves you have to support the startups? Considering that some of the startups have raised, you know, Series A. And, you know, their fund requirements could be much higher than how, you know, the time at which you entered them as an investor, right? I mean, when our companies have done Series A, you know, it also means that there are uh, two or three other uh, large funds uh, that are also yeah. part of the cap table. Uh, so, we, so, you know, we have kind of handed the companies over to the next stage investors, uh, but we will continue to stay in, engaged uh, with the investors and the company in support. Thanks a lot for your valuable time and sharing your perspectives on how to navigate the pandemic hit economy. That's all from our side in this episode of Capital Call, which airs every Monday. Keep listening and thank you once again.